Okay, next we're going to cover Vesawas Major. We can discuss Vesawas Minor briefly. Vesawas Minor, if you think about the lumbar spine, we've got 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and then you've got T12. So T12 and L1 will be the attachment of Vesawas Minor. It's actually thought of as a vestigial muscle, which means that some patients might have one and, and others might not. And then from here it goes to the iliopectineal line. The one we are concerned with is Vesawas Major, which will go from the attachment of 5 and 4 and 3 and 2 and it will come off the vertebral bodies and the intervertebral discs and then the psoas muscle will actually converge with the iliacus which sits on this iliac fossa here. These two muscles will come down and then this is the anterior superior iliac spine, this is the pubic tubercle, there is the inguinal ligament in between and then this iliopsoas, so the iliacus and the psoas will come down through and insert onto the lesser trochanter, which is on the inside part of the femur. The main action will be that it's the main hip flexor. However, if the legs are fixed, then we can have trunk flexion. So if you are doing regular sit-ups, then no doubt the psoas muscle in particular will be the main muscle for doing the abdominal curl and not the rectus abdominis. Many years ago, a guy called Yander talked about a hyperlordosis and he designed what they call the lower crossed syndrome. What that means is the pelvis is tilted anteriorly and the lumbar is increased in its lordosis. And he said that the psoas working in conjunction with the lumbar spine erector will hold you in the anterior tilted hyperlordotic position and the gluteus maximus will lengthen and so will the rectus abdominis. Yanda also has a upper crossed syndrome as well. And other muscles of concern will be the adductors. The adductors, there will be the adductor magnus, longus, brevis, and then you've also got pectineus, which is a short muscle, and then you've also got gracilis, which is the long muscle. Most of them will originate on the inferior superior ramus or pubis here, and then they will attach onto different parts of the femur, onto the linear aspera, and gracilis actually travels all the way down to insert onto what they call the pes and serinus, which is on the medial side of the tibia. Pes means foot, and serine means the goose foot. And it's sartorius gracilis and semitendinosis where they attach. A Dr. Magnus also has an attachment to where my thumb is here, called the adductor tubercle. And the second part of it will be onto the back of the femur, called the linear aspera. The adductors, as we know, are movements of the hip that will take you into adduction, but also, because of their attachment, they also will assist in the leg lifting for hip flexion, and they will turn the leg in onto internal rotation. The tensor fascia lata, is a muscle that comes from the inferior part of the anterior superior iliac spine. And it is like saying it is my pocket. So my pocket will be roughly where the attachment of a TFL is here. And then it travels down as a band or a tract called the iliotibial band or the iliotibial tract. And it goes down the whole part of the leg and it will insert, I'll probably use this one easier. It will insert onto the lateral aspect of a condyle of a tibia and that is called Gerdes tubercle, named after a French surgeon called Nicolas Gurdy. The IT band has a tendency to rub on the lateral side here, and then it's known as an iliotibial band friction syndrome. The rectus femoris is also a, a hip flexor. The rectus femoris attaches from the anterior inferior iliac spine, and then it comes down as a, the belly of the rectus femoris, and attaches via the ligament of the patella, all the way down. So this is actually the quadricep tendon, but as it comes down onto the patella, it then becomes what is known as the ligamentum patelli, but they will converge together and insert around the tuberosity of the tibia. The rectus femoris will hip flex and knee extend. And the tensor fascia lata, just to, to clarify, it's also a hip flexor and it can affect the position of the tibia for stability for when you are walking. The hamstrings, we've got the semitendinosis, the semimembranosis, 
and the bicep femoris. They all approximate the ischial tuberosity. We've got the ligament that goes from the tuberosity to the sacro, which is called the sacrotuberous ligament here. And the studies show that the hamstrings as a group, especially the bicep femoris, will converge within that ligament and it's a continuation. Myers has a sling where he talks about the superficial back line where it goes up on the same side. And Vleeman has another sling called the posterior longitudinal sling that contralaterally connects to the opposite side. But the hamstrings attach here and then onto the posterior part, then the semitendinosus and semimembranosus. The semimembranosus will attach here. The semitendinosus on the medial side of the tibia and then bicep femoris will go to the head of the fibula. They all will assist in knee flexion and hip extension.